Hey guys, I'm back and I'm going to be doing another budget keyboard build. This is going to be the Royal Kludge RK100. This one does come fully pre-built, but we're going to be taking this thing apart and switching some things to see what kind of sound we can achieve. So let's hop into it. So I'll do a quick rundown of what comes with this keyboard in the box. Of course you got the board. You got your little user manual uh, just to let you know everything you know how to control macros certain lighting effects in the board pretty good to read through and it's pretty short and simple so we've got this it's got a couple of other goodies uh, tucked away it has a cable a switch puller and some extra switches um, as you'll see here I'll take this out of the package and show you guys it's nothing special it's a decent length i'm not sure exactly how long i didn't uh, measure it but it's just it's not braided just a usb-c to usb-a cable gets the job done uh, a nice solid uh, multi-tool with the switch puller and the keycap puller and some extra switches this is the rk100 i believe this is the carbon edition um, I like the way it looks, honestly, and these are the keycaps I'm going to end up putting back onto the board after I do a little bit of modifying, but here's what it sounds like. So now I'll start to break this thing down. This is gonna be simple. All we're gonna do here is take this off, change the switches out for something else. Um, I will end up doing tape mod, but other than that, we don't have to do too much to get this thing sounding pretty nice. Uh, in all honesty, I think it sounded pretty solid straight out of the factory. Um, stabilizers, you know, they're stock budget stabilizers, but these weren't too bad compared to some of the other keyboards I've used. Uh, so, yeah, gonna pop these switches out and then we'll get into stabilizers and when we get to that point uh, I kind of tried to make it not so tedious and long. I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see somebody else mod stabilizers for the umpteenth hundred time so let me know what you guys think about how I go over these stabilizers, alright? All right, so for these, I'm gonna be taking you step by step. Step one here, unclip them and remove them from the plate. Uh, step two, you're gonna to wanna to snap the wires out of the housings. Uh, they can only go one way, so snap them out, remove them, you're good to go. Next, if your wires came pre-lubed, remove any of that gunk that might be on there. Uh, we wanna clean these and get them as, as ready as possible, as clean as possible for our own lubing. Next, you'll take the stem out of the housing. Uh, pretty simple, you can probably push them through with your fingers, I just use tweezers here. Then we'll want to remove the lube that was applied in the factory from these as well. 
Next up, we're gonna lube our stems ourselves. This is 205G0. Uh, you can go as crazy as you want. I recommend not doing too much or else you might risk it feeling mushy, but you do wanna be kind of liberal. Next, I use dielectric grease on the wires. Uh, you see I dip once and then I go a little past the bend. Then we snap them back in and we are ready to now throw these back onto the plate. So that's it for stabilizers, guys. I hope you can uh, emulate it, get a good result yourself. Sometimes you'll go back in and have to readjust how much lube you put, but don't be scared. After a couple tries, you'll find something that works for you and you won't have to worry about it anymore. So now that the stabilizer is said and done, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the plate and PCB assembly, and then we're gonna pop in these switches. So these are some Holy Panda clones. I I'm not sure whether to call them clones or not. I know the original Holy Panda uh, mold was lost some time ago, and now there's a bunch of companies making them. So take with that information and do what you want with it. These were marketed as Holy Pandas. They were on the cheaper side. Um, I nabbed them up because I wanted to see what they were like, and in the future, I uh, have a little exciting tidbit of a, a build coming up, so I wanted to compare these against some holy pandas that Drop makes. Um, so, you know, I jumped in, I, I decided to buy these, and I like the way they sound. Uh, you know, we'll see what they sound like here in the board in a bit, but the feel from just pressing them here, uh, the way they feel stock, I didn't mind it, so I decided to go ahead and pop them into the board. Now we're going to do the tape mod. This helps almost every budget build if you like that sound signature. Um, you'll be able to see the difference between the start and the end here. Yes, the switches will be different, but the tape mod kind of tends to make things a little deeper um, and not too hollow. So I really enjoy using this mod for budget keyboards, but you can see here uh, what you think about it in the end. Really easy to do, just make sure you leave any space for any wires there might be, and you can also poke holes through for the screw holes. If not, you can kind of apply pressure and the screws should go in through the tape anyways. But mess around with it, give it a shot. I really like the results. I know a lot of people do. Uh, it should be no problem. So once we've got these layers, like I said, going two layers here, I'm gonna take some scissors and snip off the edges, make sure everything fits nice and clean. And then all we have to do is reassemble this back into the bottom part of the case, reattach the wires, and we can hop uh, into the next step of throwing on keycaps. So at this point, we're almost done with the build here. I mean, it's really simple what you can do when you just get a pre-built and all you really want to do is change out switches uh, for the most part. You know, with these budget boards, you usually get some really cheap looking or cheap feeling ABS keycaps with the shine through and that's just really not my thing. Uh, so the fact that this board had this kind of different uh, budget set, like by no means is it a great feeling or a great, great quality, but for what it is, it's not bad. And you know, it saves you 20, 30 bucks from getting some cheap clones off of Amazon or AliExpress or something like that. So after this is done, I'm going to leave you guys with a sound test. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, please like and follow. And remember, if you're interested in buying this keyboard or any other keyboard that I've featured on the channel, uh, there will be a link in the description where you guys can support me, and I really appreciate that. A couple of you guys have actually purchased some of the keyboards. So I hope uh, you guys are enjoying them. And uh, yeah, so until next time, thanks, guys.